we are trying to address very complex questions. We're trying to learn the rules that govern biology. Being able to capture the biological variation within a single patient is going to be, you know, the quintessential definition of precision medicine. So in your opinion, what's next in this field? What's next in the application of quantum computing to machine learning for precision medicine? What's the next thing that we could expect from where we are today? So within the next two or three years, I think that you are going to find more and more academic publications that are coming out that are working on, and we're, we're hopefully going to be part of this, they're integrating aspects of statistical optimization, both classical and nascent statistical optimization approaches. And what I mean by that, quantum optimization. If we're looking at neuromorphic computing and building you know, spiking neural networks, which, which most believe right now are significantly more analogous to current deep learning topologies, is that there's going to be an integration or a marriage of these technologies together to get at some of the issues that we have just talked about here is that we are we are trying to address very complex questions you know and we're teaching we're trying to learn the rules that govern biology and we don't know those rules and so we can't take a lot of what google has developed over the years you know one of which are our knowledge graphs right so if you know google earth and and the gps system you actually know how to get to point a to point b well, at the molecular level, we don't know how to get from point A to point B. We, we don't know the infrastructure yet that we can track or trace molecular information flow through. We're getting, we're getting closer to being able to do that, but we're not quite there. So what do you think is the next big thing is gonna happen in AI? I am a firm believer that artificial intelligence is the single most transformative technology in human history. We are actually seeing that now and where this is going, and I can really only speak with any type of authority in the biological sciences, but where it's going to have its biggest impact is in precision medicine and specifically single cell science. We know very little currently about human biology, relatively speaking. Now we have the techniques, we have the algorithms in place to understand how the, the estimated 37.2 trillion cells that exist in the, in the average human being, how they interact or how they behave with one another. And where this opens the door is in precision medicine. So rare diseases where you do not have thousands of patients, you know, rare childhood diseases like NF2 that we're working on uh, with Children's Hospital in Philadelphia and another, a, a number of other organizations is that you, you may only have 10 patients, right? is that you can go in, in a single patient, you can, you can extract information, you can build these models on top of this omics data, you can find a signature that has to do with that or is related to that driver of disease, and then you can go into other patients. It's going to be a real game changer. And you know, what we've talked about, about marrying, or marrying nascent technologies with current you know, computing architectures is going to be another game changer. So it's all coming together at the same time, but being able to capture the biological variation, disease variation within a single patient is going to be, you know, the quintessential definition of precision medicine at that point.